Hello everyone, welcome to our analyst review of Dell's AI data platform announcement. I'm here with Rob Stretch. Hey Rob, good to see you. Glad to be here. Let's get into it. So what is the Dell AI data platform? You know, how, how does it fit into Dell's strategy generally, but their AI strategy specifically? Yeah, I, I think they look at it, and you and I talk about this a lot, where the AI, the Dell AI data platform is really the foundation for a lot of the things that they're building up on top of that. It really comes on four core pillars, one of them being power scale, one of them being object scale. That's really the storage engine aspect of it. Uh, then they have the other, which is the data engine. Uh, they really look at it from elastic and a starburst perspective as contributing to that data engine as well as they're adding open source with Spark. Uh, then they really look at another leg of that stool is cyber resiliency, which they've built in with their native tools. And then they look at bringing data management services on top of that, bringing that all together to have a ready platform for deploying agentic workloads. Yeah, so Dell's known for having purpose-built storage, right? They're not trying to do the all-in-one Swiss Army knife, so you mentioned uh, uh, power scale and, and, and object as well. Elastic is the vector? It's search? the vector aspect of it, and we'll kind of get into that a little okay. bit, but um, when you start to look at it, they're using Starburst as their federated query engine, and then Elastic as diving into the vectors, uh, and then they have a number of other partnerships that they're working on as well with that, uh, but also, hey, I need another uh, engine on top of it. I want to use Python, so they uh, have the ability of deploying Spark into that environment as well. So essentially to me, it's like Dell saying, hey, we're an infrastructure player. We can't do all of this stuff ourselves. We've got a partner for it. So you're familiar, of course, with the famous MIT study, which is 95% uh, you know, of these, uh, these POCs fail six months after going into production. Uh, part of that reason is, is data. So why is now the right time for organizations to invest in, in AI data platforms? Yeah, I, I think, you know, again, when you start to look at it, if you don't have the right foundation to a house, the house is going to fall over. I think we all look at that and, you know, again, I don't want to say that too much, but I'm, I'm a data guy, right? And I look at the data infrastructure. Uh, in fact, you know, when you look at adoption, uh, and Varun and some others have talked about this, is really how do you get from POC to production if you don't have quality data that you, is accessible, you're in a tough spot. And f with this, a lot of people have struggled with fragmented solid, uh, silo data across multiple different systems. And AI really uh, requires and operates across cloud core and edge. And I think what people are trying to do is how do we bring this together and bring the right tooling together? And this is where the AI data platform with people like Starburst and Elastic and Spark, they're trying to not only bring together what's in their kit, but across kit as well. And I think, you know, they have, uh, they had on their uh, segment, Maya HTT, who's a uh, implementer. And what they were using on top of the Dell AI data platform was really power scale with NVIDIA GPUs and what they call their MBOT solution to kind of help people understand. And in particular, they talked about two different customers, uh, MDM Space, which has a ton of, or I would say a vast uh, amount of unstructured data that they're really bringing together and trying to put into so that they, their engineers can go faster and that they can review different designs and accelerate output for satellites that they build. Uh, and then you have, they also talked about CSL, who's a shipping operator. And they were looking really specifically to reduce and improve their fuel efficiency. So how do you understand routes? How do you understand different telemetry and data from these big ships? Well, they were able to get a 3% lift in efficiencies on, and cost savings on those ships and the shipping operations by putting in this thing. I think that goes to that MIT study of, hey, how do you get from POC to production? It's really being very selective on the use case. It's engaging. And sometimes, you know, you look at it, partners who've seen this for different industries with Mata in particular, they looked at it from an engineering and a manufacturing perspective. And obviously getting your data act together is a big part of that. Yes. Um, let's sort of line it up with, with 
some other platforms. I mean, the modern data stack was almost exclusively in the cloud. You mentioned, you know, cloud to core to edge. So that's obviously one of the differences, but how, in your view, is this, is Dell's approach different from other d AI data solutions? Yeah, I mean, I, I look at it and go, they've taken a composable approach to their AI data stack, and they're looking at it by saying, hey, this architecture lets us bring in, plug in. They're not saying you have to use Elastic, you're not having to use Starburst, but they recommend those uh, as part of it. Uh, but they say, hey, use PowerScale and Object Scale, and then on top of them, there's a common control plane that Dell has deployed that allows you to plug in these other pieces with Elastic, with Starburst, that gives you a better uh, efficiency from that. And I think that's why, you know, not every customer is the same. Some have different, you know, some aren't going to want to go to Spark because they don't know Python or something. Not, but then you have people who are in the data science realm really want to go deep into that and build models beyond just agentic models or maybe using agentic to call traditional AI as well. So I think their approach is different in the fact that they're not trying to silo you all into one box. They let you plug in, you know, different pieces in there best on, based on best of breed. So help me understand that because some of that's do it yourself, but at the same time, um, I'm inferring that one of the value props of this is that they've got an opinionated stack and it's a solution. So what are they? What what are the problems that they're really solving for from a customer standpoint? I, I think that's where their special sauce comes in, which is that aggregation or composability layer that they've built. If you think about it, I mean, we know that you know when they were when they went into the hyperconverged space, one of the things and reasons why VxRail took off was the fact that their special sauce got you up and running incredibly fast. And what they've done within this ecosystem within the Dell AI data platform is they brought that knowledge of how to make a composable system really tightly integrated between these pieces, but having optionality. So they're really, to your point, letting the optionality be easy where you can plug in different pieces or unplug different pieces based on your needs so that it can evolve over time. So what are those specific pieces like what's uh, th this has been around for you know some time now what's what's new in this platform yeah I, I think some of the major innovations was really when they brought in elastic uh, to power the unstructured data engine and really helping with the real-time rag enabling you know faster search semantic enrichment and really accelerating uh, that uh, vector for the GPU acceleration uh, for RAG and AI chatbots. Starburst uh, has been, was the first partner that they launched with, uh, really built on Trino, as we all know, open source, but really that helped them tie even tighter into the federated analytics and AI queries uh, that have, you know, live across many different data silos. So this gives them, hey, maybe not everything's going to be on power scale and object scale. I'm sure they would love that. But hey, I have to bring queries together across different data sets. And now with Iceberg and open, uh, you know, open table formats, which they can leverage using uh, Starburst, that helps them with that. And I think when they look at it, they also brought in uh, Metadata IQ, which is really intelligent indexing of billions of files for AI pipelines, and then really PowerScale RAG connector which was a streamlining the retrieval augmented generation portion within PowerScale. Because I think if you look at that unstructured data and how you have to go and do this, they're bringing that pipeline. Because a lot of people fall down on how do you build your data pipelines? How do you make them and maintain them? Uh, in fact, we'll have some new research coming out pretty soon from the Data Platform Summit that even just tangentially, if I can say that properly, looks like it's really Building these pipelines yourself, to your point, hey, there's some DIY, but really it's more you choose point and click DIY versus I actually have to knit this stuff together. So it's not quite in the weeds of DIY. So a couple of, let's see, to 2024 GTC, we saw Jensen point to Michael Dell and, and basically talk about how Dell is you know, number one at end to end. 
Dell picked up on the AI Factories name, so it's now the Dell AI Factories with NVIDIA is their branding. We've been covering that quite extensively, but initially it was just kind of a bunch of hardware and then NVIDIA's stack. It seems like the stack is evolving. This is part of it. How does this fit into the AI Factories narrative? Yeah, I mean, I think, again, you know, like you've talked about a lot, it's, uh, you have not only their own stack of stuff that they're bringing together, but Dell is really good at integrating in these different types. In fact, they've gone out and become storage certified with a number of the different uh, NVIDIA deployment models uh, So for the AI factories, and they bring together stuff like the retrievers, the Nemo and NIMS retrievers, and a number of things that can be deployed as part of this package. So I think where the AI data platform is really that foundation, then they're bringing together that stack up on top of it as well with the NVIDIA stack. And they're connecting the dots between say the RAG connector and PowerScale with some of the retriever stuff that's in Nemo, uh, stuff that's in the NVIDIA stack as well. Rob, as you know, you know AI is largely about unstructured data. That's the real challenge. Um, what is Dell doing there? Have they changed their sort of strategy around unstructured data? Are they just kind of bringing legacy you know, platforms and pointing them at AI? What, what are they doing there that's specifically sort of making sort of AI ready, if you will, and, and yeah. for, for parallel processing? Yeah, I think when they look at it, they're doing a number of things to help them from a power scale and object scale, really looking at different types of products for the right workloads, like again, power scale handling a high performance file-based workloads, uh, which really supports training, inference, and RAG, object scale providing the scalable cloud native or S3 compliant object storage for massive data sets. And they're really looking at this as providing you know, unified visibility and flexible data movement without re-architecture. Because if you go and look at how these multimodal generative and RAG uh, AI implementations are going, they're using different types of data. You actually may have an object, but that object actually may be a file. And so when they look at it, what is the right storage for the right type of workload? And they have it all. So that really helps them from that perspective. You know, I've never seen so much focus as I, as I have these days on lock-in. You know, people, I mean, generally speaking, about 15% of the customers that I talk to say, yeah, we're concerned about lock-in, but we're really concerned about business value. And I think, by the way, that's, that's largely going to be the case, but it's almost become, you know, compulsory that you have a quote unquote open system. And we, you and I know open systems used to mean Unix. You yeah. know? <laughs> and so, so take that for what you will. Uh, but the, so the, my point is the definition of open evolves. So what is Dell doing to ensure that their systems are open and then they can minimize lock-in? Yeah, I, I think Dell has really taken a, a great approach in this. I mean, they do this through their partnerships, they do this through the choice, but they're also doing and embracing it like Apache Iceberg and open APIs and supporting interoperability across different analytics platforms, AI platforms, and science tools, scientific tools. They're not dictating what formats, or they're looking at supporting all of the open standards. So again, they look at it as if the market has chosen to go down the iceberg route, they're absolutely all in on that. And I think that way, if you look at it, really makes the data accessible, not only within that stack that you've deployed there, but cross stacks so that they can actually, their data platform can actually be part of other data systems and AI systems as you go along. It gives just freedom of choice, it really reduces lock-in, and it really is actually you know, a requirement for long-term success. Excellent. Um, I'd like to give you a couple of my thoughts on this, yeah. this whole... Well, I would love to get, because especially diving into the AI, the AI factory aspect of it as well. I think that um, the trend that I've noticed, and I think part of the reason why uh, this whole ROI discussion gets get brought forth is because organizations have put so much emphasis on the cloud and they've kind of de-emphasized you know, to a large extent they're on-prem, but now they're saying, well, I'm not going to put some of my core systems into the cloud. I want to bring that intelligence to the data that lives on-prem. And in doing so, 
I think they're realizing that they, their, their data stack um, maybe needs to catch up to sort of the modern data stacks that have been in the cloud and that data is siloed, it's not harmonized and they have all this you know, really great excitement around Agentic. But in order to achieve that vision, they have to get their data to a place where they can serve it up in a governed manner to agents and they're trying to figure out, okay, who around here can do that? Who's got the skill sets to do that? Um, AI factories, as I say, can't just be hardware. You've got to have the surrounding stack, not just the data stack, but you have to have governance. If you're going to do uh, open table formats, you've got to be able to talk to other governance catalogs. And then, and then I would need to develop applications if I'm going to have all this you know, vibe coding and everybody's going to be coding. Well, then I have to support that. And again, it's got to be compliant. So. All of that is going to take some time to build out, but, but I do think, Rob, that we're going to see, a, a, I don't know if it's a 10X or a 10, 20, 30, 40%, like Michael Dell says, improvement in productivity, uh, but you can already see it. You certainly see it in coding. You certainly see it in our daily lives and how AI is you know, impacting our productivity and allowing us to do more things. And so I think it's going to take a couple of years to play out, but I'm envisioning that you're going to have a, an on-prem stack that is hybrid, it talks to the cloud. I think the edge is going to be really interesting. You saw some of the announcements that uh, NVIDIA made this week in telco. And so that whole thing with 5G and 6G is starting to emerge. And so I'm, I'm envisioning the cloud as this expanding universe and AI overlaid around, you know, we used to call it super cloud, but then agents being able to serve up um, those governed uh, uh, that uh, uh, to take advantage of that governed data and actually take actions with humans in the loop. I think that's going to be the case for quite some time. And I think AI factories are essentially, you know, the data center of the future. Your thoughts? I, I, I agree. Uh, I, and I think, again, the foundation of them comes back to the data, right? I mean, data center. I mean, again, it's the center of data. And I, I look at it and go, I, I'm a big fan of hybrid and I think that hybrid and multi-cloud is going to win out. And multi-cloud meaning it's not just uh, a hyperscaler. Multi-cloud means an operating system. And I think that's really what I love about Dell's approach to this. Again, they didn't say, hey, we're solely this stack. Every, every piece of software is from us. You come in and you're, you're stuck in here. Uh, that choice and the ability to be able to go cross silo with their stack and integrate their stack into other stacks is what I think AI, you know, to your, your point, the AI uh, factories of the future are going to be, you know, really heterogeneous in that way, but they have to have the right solution underneath it because people are looking at, to your point about data, data is stranded in other silos. And it's if you can go and make that actionable, which Dell can with their Dell AI data platform, they can go and make that actionable. That helps return a little positive ROI more than you would normally get if you had to say, I'm going to go move everything to the cloud and push all my data up there, which to your point, nobody's going to do that. There's something like 80% of the data is still stuck on prem. And that data is going to be used for certain use cases and probably, or funnily enough, it's going to probably be a higher ROI use case because that data is something that they've kept very close. It may be tied to certain processes that really there's people with certain knowledge that they have to get out and build into these agentic lines. And I think that's why, you know, again, building these on-premise data platforms to bring things together and be able to be the source of truth for these AI systems is, is going to be key going so forward. So it's not, it's not just about the LLMs, it's not just about you know, the models and the algorithms, it's going to be about what you can do with them. And I think this is going to be a real B2B boom. I think that's what's going to drive this. Right now it's all about the CapEx, but I think the, the revenue generation and the productivity from enterprises is going to catch up to that. It might take a few years, yeah. uh, but you know our expectation is, you know, it's not going to be a straight line. And sometimes it gets a little bumpy, but overall, you know, we think that uh, that the hype is going to manifest itself into reality. So thanks, Absolutely. Rob. Appreciate your time. Well, thank you.
Okay, and thank you everyone for watching our analyst review of Dell's AI data platform announcement. Until next time, this is Dave Vellante for Rob Stretche.